YouTube channel where we bring reviews, interviews and the metal news and much more into your living room. Subscribe, like to be notified once we release uh, something and this time a very live interview on the 2024 edition and it was our second time there so if you would like to know what we what our first talk were on the festival, first impressions and the 2023 lineup just head over below in the link as it's all there already discussed on the channel. So in this very review we will compare what was different than the previous year and as well zero totes on the bands that played. So let's kick off. The location was first of all the very same. So see our previous review to get an impression where it is. But just to give a short overview to just give you the background. It happens each year at the Styrian mountains and actually by the way you can as well check our interview out with one of the organizers there to learn more. And yeah it's a very serene a remote location which lends very well for the extreme uh, metal bands and it was actually interesting. This time the headliners were not the much extreme extreme. They were also well very old school and grind course so this was a big change and I believe it's a great way to bring like distractions over uh, from Germany because having an old school headliner instead of a very extreme metal one it opens the door for metal hats that are not really into extreme metal yet or are not sure if the bands are for them so having destruction it's like there is no question if you need to be or not when i saw that destruction is going to headline i bought straight away my tickets basically and i know first it's fantastic but i mean when you see destruction on the bill they are trash leggings it's the band to be having such a big old school opener. I think it's a great, excellent strategy. Well done, Kaltebok, as it opens the door for an audience yet that are not in extreme and you can attract a new one and get to know them extreme metal and give them something else to learn. And it really hooks into what I discussed earlier as Kaltebok is a fest where you will learn so much different kind of extreme metals and this just opens the door. So well done on the strategy of bands. The only drawback I would say with this year is not on that was great as it's great core and it's a bit kind of different headliner than last year but overall I must say that the size of the bands were a bit uh, smaller than last year as last year you had bigger names. However, it was still a great festival to be and as a much more old school pers person, I must say I enjoyed this edition a bit more if you look at uh, the bill. Uh, but yeah, some bigger bands could be there. And then secondly, another thing that was different than was the social media presence. From the beginning on you saw a lot of posts about the build up, what it takes to organize this fest. So it gives, gave a little bit much more excited and I started to share in this post. What actually was different is that the organization chose to hire a media team who really built up the excitement and I believe it's a great strategy are not convinced yet when they see these videos and then they see again and again they started to think about the festival and reconsider if they should buy so definitely social media is like the number one thing to reach people and to get an attention so well done again for uh, Cultivar. Oh yeah there is another small thing that was different. So one of the things that was different is the organization 
in general. Here there were nice like in the few signs that an interview is in progress and there were well signs that you can be on certain area which well <laughs> there was no electricity last year so it was like kind of uh, funny to see this sign and I think it also gives a bit like an atmosphere what the fest is about but it's like a very family atmosphere that it always had and this trends and this even more so thank you so much for Kaltenbach opener uh, specifically Natty for making this nice uh, sign and for helping us as well with interviews it's it made like it easier and a great way to offer bands to be interviewed in a quiet space so really well done uh, Kaltenbach and thank you so much for organizing and helping us a bit with uh, interviews and there were as well a bit of funny parts this year as there was like a pilot like a truck that brought up a band with people up it was quite uh, funny to see actually and that was quite a funny moment that wasn't yet there on Kaltebo so as you see Kaltebo is a festival of surprise some from time to time but as well they took the improvements of last year and they built up on it so it's a festival that continues growing and it's so great as they're quite like a successful festival to just develop and yeah another thing that was great this year was that there was drinking water i believe it's very great because not everyone drinks booze some people are just hangover and too drunk to drink more so it's very great that they offer this possibility for yeah for metal fans to have a cup of water really nice so yeah this was for uh, last year versus this year so let's now talk about bills we only did two days as uh, due to time limitations so the first band we saw was Heaton and Heaton is a very familiar band as we covered them two years, three years ago in our old uh, format. So we were super excited to see how they bring the American dress out live and whoa, what an excellent band and the dynamic that Craig and, and David especially have but as well the other band members are excellent like it's super funny like David is a very big jokester although he couldn't make a joke in our interview <laughs> that's a pity so we might him ask him another time but as well on the stage you saw that he was cracking jokes and doing sometimes weird like funny poses and the first thing actually that David was like when he came off the stage not like everyone does starting to sing no he just hugged his friend and I think it's so great as there is so much comedy friendship in it and they don't only play to play and not only because they love the music they love to bring the music to the fans but they really like to be part of each other to tour with each other to play with each other so it's a very tight uh, connected uh, band and I really like as well Craig and uh, how he plays he's very technical I would say he really like makes sure that everything is correct and of course the drummer and everyone in the band is greatly playing his instrument but it feels to me Craig and is like a bit like a mastermind in uh, in like in getting the technical details uh, correct and I loved drumming as well so and the way they played the intro their intro was quite interesting like a very distinctive sound actually and then the set was very great as was stress but it had some melodic choruses Riffs, it was so diverse and David's voice really like shines life. He's such a great, great uh, singer. So yeah, Heaton is it's one band you have to experience because it's not like the big four of Germany. It's not like Metallica. It's something of their own. They really like 
made this genre, I would say, on their own. So I would say, watch the videos, go see them live as Heaton is really like true thrash metal in their own unique uh, way. And the second band we saw was Obscura. Obscura was a great one as well. They have a really strong frontman, Stephen Coomer, whose voice is like excellent, the growth, the way he sings is unbelievable. easier part to headbang alone so it's a band that's not too heavy and it's not too complex for an audience because some technical bands are great but you really go to for the instrumental experience here it's a bit about like audience engagement uh, and so on so it was really nice to see a different kind of technical uh, death metal band so yeah definitely check obscura out